The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good evening and welcome to our Destination Imagination Team Manager Training for Brand Aid, the Project Outreach Challenge for 2014-2015. On the phone, we have Dan Wilson and Megan Morgenthaler, who are your affiliate challenge masters, and they will be giving the presentation. When you have questions, please type them into your question box that's in your GoToMeeting, or excuse me, GoToWebinar control panel, and we will go ahead and answer them at the appropriate time. So once again, thank you for coming, and thank you for being team managers. We're really excited to have you guys on board, and we're really excited about this challenge. So I will let Dan and Megan take over. Good evening. This is uh, Dan Wills. And Megan is with me. You want to say hello so I know you're right. Hello. Hi. This is Megan. <laughs> and we want to welcome you to Project Outreach for the 2014-15 season. Um, as we mentioned, our names were the Affiliate Challenge Masters, and um, I'm also the Regional Challenge Master for Cherry Creek. And, and I'm... Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm also a Regional Challenge Master for Boulder. And as you can see on the screen, uh, there's... Everyone else listed for the regional ch regional um, challenge masters. If you need to reach out to somebody, uh, you can email us at any time, and we can get you contact information for your region. Um, we'll share our information later in this presentation. We'd like to start with a quick video about what Project Outreach is. Megan, do you want to set this one up? Yeah, um, a wonderful, uh, experienced Project Outreach team from Louisville Middle School helped me make this video, and it gives a brief, fun introduction of what Project Outreach is all about, um, what you're getting into, and how the process works. Is the volume working? Dan, is your volume up? It's all the way up. Is it not coming through? No. It's not coming through for me. I'm sorry. Well, I will stop it and um, can, we'll... you, can you try it one more time? Sure. Um, oh, if this doesn't Rocky, work. Rocky said, one of our team managers on the line says that she hears it. So if you can hear the chat, if you can hear the video, please just type in your question box that you can hear it and then we'll restart it. It might just be me and Megan that can't hear it. Okay, um, Megan, do you have this video on your um, yes. just plain, not embedded? I do have it. It's on YouTube. Um, okay. If I have it on my computer, I also have it on YouTube. If you just search what is Project Outreach, we can do this. Um, that's the title of the video. Hold on a second. We will f see what we can do. What's, what do I search for? Uh, what is Project Outreach? Yeah. It's a fun video. It's worth it. Hold on. Let's see. Get to it. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, I hope that worked well for everyone. Um, if it didn't, you can just find it on YouTube um, if you'd like to see it off of the webinar. And also you can show it to your teams to give them a better idea of what Project Outreach is all about. Okay. Go ahead, Dan. So now we're going to cover the project. Okay, do you want me to take this? Please, go ahead. Okay. Um, so the first step in developing the project, which is the element of the challenge where the team goes out and does a community service project. And this is the first part of this challenge. And then the second part is creating their presentation about what they did. So the first part of completing the project is coming up with a community need. And this is something that in the challenge is very loosely defined. Um, the kids really get to look, whatever the kids say is a community need, really can be a community need. This can be, they can also define community in uh, whichever way they'd like. It can be large or small. Um, and whatever real need is can really be whatever uh, the kids decide. It's not, the, the appraisers don't reward any points for uh, like valuing whether a community need is legitimate or not. So the team might say that an Xbox in their classroom is a team or community need, and their, their community is their classroom, where that Xbox is just going to make a world of difference motivating others to do their schoolwork or whatever they come up with. That is okay if it's if that's what they want to strive for, that's fine. Exactly. And on the same token, they can define their community uh, more globally and, for example, develop a project to raise books to go to Africa or, um, you know, it can be as small as the classroom or a family and as large as the world. Are we good on this slide? Yep, I've moved to the next. Okay. So the team will design and implement a project that addresses that community need that they've identified, and they need to use innovative and creative approaches to figure out, what, figure out a way to solve that need. Um, anything else? And this to is add one to place. That? Sorry. Oh, sorry. This is one place where I really think um, having the community service connected to destination imagination makes this really unique because we do encourage teams to think, you know, put on their destination imagination hat and think about how to solve real world problems in innovative and creative ways. So project goals. So uh, throughout the challenge, throughout the part A of the challenge, um, there's a lot of scaffolding put in place to really help the teams uh, design and implement a really effective project and encouraging the team to have a goal in mind when they begin their project is one of these. So uh, one of the requirements is that the team really define what their goal is. Is that to um, collect so many cans of food or help a certain group of people. Um, and they really should define what they want to accomplish because it'll make their presentation element when they go back to look at what they've done and um, what's that called? They evaluate their project. Um, that will be easier if they've defined their goals. Community partner. The team uh, may enlist a community partner. They don't. They don't have to do it this year. Last year it was a requirement. This year this is an optional element. Um, and they have to, if they do choose to have a community partner, they do have to create any presentations uh, without the assistance from that community. So uh, we have a jingle, we have a logo that has to be developed. The partner can't define those things for them. Um, again, and the they're partner not, can only assist in the project, not the presentation. And so there isn't a scoring element for this. Um, any partner engagement is just to help them achieve their goal um, in whatever fundraisers or projects that they set out to do. 
And I think one of the really key uh, things from the challenge is that the community partner can give the team advice, information, money, supplies, or labor. Anything outside of that really falls into interfering with their project. They can't define what the team must do. They can't um, organize the project for the team. They are just there to help provide advice, information, money, supplies, or labor. And so like last year, if the team does choose to use a partner, they have to do all the communication with that partner. Um, we do want to keep safety as a top priority. And so if there's a situation where you're trying to set up a phone call between the team and the partner as an introduction, it's okay to call ahead and say, you're going to have some young kids calling you to do a project. This isn't a prank call, and we're going to do a conference call so everyone can listen in to make sure everything stays appropriate and have them expecting the call. But the kids need to explain what their project is and what, what they're trying to accomplish with it. Um, and we need to be aware whenever they, your team needs to be aware whenever they select a partner that the partners, um, if they're helping a partner achieve a project, the rules the partner might have defined doesn't define the kids' project. Um, an example of that might be cleaning up a neighborhood. Uh, some of the uh, government uh, protocols say what day you can do it, what time you can do it, what supplies you will use, and that leaves no room for creativity for the team to define and run the project themselves. Along those same lines, the teams can participate in that kind of thing, but they must do something to expand upon the project to make it their own. You know, for example, um, going and sharing what they've learned about recycling with people to create their own campaign against, well, I guess recycling or litter or um, whatever. So the project plan keeps the team focused on the goals. Um, it can include a timeline, activities, and resources. Um, and this is strictly for their benefit. There is no points attached to this. Um, you know, if they've defined goals, the project plan is going to help them stay focused on where they're going with it. Yeah, same. I mean, it's what I was talking about, where the challenge provides the scaffolding to really give the teams the tools they need to effectively do their project. And if they do this at the beginning, creating their presentation and their project evaluation will be easier. So the next part is the brand that the team needs to uh, come up with. Uh, first part is they need to develop a logo. In this slide we have several examples of various logos that uh, are well known and the team needs to develop something that is distinct and eye-catching and memorable. And um, They can use and build upon pieces of work that are out there, but they need to make it unique to themselves. And if they do something, if they were to take the NBC Peacock and build upon that, that might get reflected in the scores. And uh, I think the challenge encourages teams to also think about what does make an effective logo, um, what, lo what logos are out there that are really memorable, and to build upon that knowledge as well. Kate, do you want to search this YouTube and play it from your machine also? Sure. So if you search on Peyton Nationwide uh, in Google, it was the number one result. It was it in YouTube? I, I searched on Google. It is it is on YouTube. Peyton. Uh, YouTube calls it yeah. YouTube calls it Jingle featuring Peyton Manning. I don't know if we want to show. <laughs> this today. All right. It seemed really great in what November when you made the made yes. the presentation. Is it still on my screen, Kate? Yeah, it's, I'm not seeing it. Nope. Let's do that again. Sorry, people. Technical difficulties. Why won't it? 
Being stubborn. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, that chicken parm, it tastes so good, gets stuck in my head every time we watch this. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a valid jingle. The kids can take and make a jingle out of something that exists. Um, it's a jingle that's based on a previous piece of work, and because it's a non-original jingle, they might see the points are fewer. Um, this is another example of kind of building on the logo from somebody else's work. This jingle is built on somebody else's work. Um, oops. We need to caution them on that. Um, the, the brand is going to be the combination of bringing those two elements together, together and helping that brand identify who they are as a group to their partners, to the community, to those that they're trying to um, promote their project to. Um, some of the guidelines is that the jingle must be audible to the human ear, so no dog whistles or um, oh, we're, we're lip syncing it and our speakers didn't work. They have to actually produce the jingle. Um, the lyrics, words, vocal tone, tones, instruments, and other sounds can be uh, of the, from the team choosing. Sorry. I'm just going back a little bit. Um, the appraisers, it's the appraisers job to make to get as close as they can to hear the jingle to make sure it's audible but appraisers can only award points for what they can hear yeah. so making it making it loud enough for the appraisers to really hear it gives the appraisers the opportunity to give as many points as possible and I do we hit it later somewhere we talk about if they do use uh, predefined artwork or shingles, they have to also be aware of copyright. And that's part of Rules of the Road. That goes for any challenge in DI. And so they need to keep that in mind as well when they're developing their brand. I think we might hit that later in the presentation. Yeah. And I think well. what we're really getting at is points are awarded for the creativity and originality of the logo and the jingle. So the more original material and creativity that the team is putting in to those two things, the more points we can award. So the presentation. The presentation um, is what the team will present at the at the tournament, and it's what we actually award points for. We don't award points for the project. So the team must create a presentation that theatrically presents the project in a creative and effective manner. Um, and all of these are the main things that the project or the presentation will portray to the audience. So clearly understanding what the goal of their presentation was is really the key piece. Um, if they get up there and you don't really understand what's being communicated, then fewer points will be presented. Um, presentation points are the effective portrayal. Um, overall creativity and effective use of theatrical techniques. So, and I think the effective use of theatrical techniques is important here in this one. Um, I think that is really encouraging teams to think about this as a theater performance, uh, telling a story and using their acting skills to really portray it to the audience and be entertaining. The project brand uh, as you can see here, it needs to be effectively integrated. Um, it, it should be visible and audio. If they're playing the jingle or showing the logo, it needs to be visible from at least 25 feet away. And this actually says audible from 25 feet away. So um, where the, the judges will try and make sure, the appraisers will try and make sure they can hear the jingle, uh, the rules do state it needs to be audible from 25 feet away. Um, it may be pre-recorded or presented live. 
and integration is a word you'll see a lot in DI and it basically means that the project brand should have a meaningful connection to the rest of their presentation. It shouldn't just be thrown out there randomly or just plastered onto their scenery. It should really have meaning in their performance. Uh, the points will come from that integration, uh, creativity and originality of the brand, the logo and the jingle, and then we want to see workmanship, quality workmanship. Um, you know, it's it's one of those subjective things, but you can tell when somebody's gone and thrown something together the night before versus they've put some time and effort into making their brand and their logo really cohesive and meaningful, something that's memorable and not. Um, something they did the night before the tournament. Project evaluation. So this is where the team will really, this part, this element of the presentation will be easier if they plan ahead and define their goals and their plan beforehand. Because in the project evaluation, they need to communicate to the audience um, what basically, well, let's see, I was going to find the wording for it in here, but they're communicating how their plan worked, whether things, whether they achieved their goals, whether their plan, whether they were really able to work through their plan as and, they went. And it's okay if they aren't successful. There's learning and failure, and that can be presented also. Um, one of the teams from last year came in and they presented that we tried plan A and it didn't work, so we went to plan B and it didn't work. So we went to plan C and, hey, we, we made some progress, but it wasn't good enough. So we went back and tried another plan. And that's that's a learning that's very valuable and that can be part of the evaluation. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be all um, roses. It, it can be possibly that the thing fell apart and that's part of what they evaluate. And, you know, if they can figure out why, that should be included. And the evaluation is uh, open-ended, but some of the examples the challenge gives uh, that they could include in their evaluation are a description of their project, the results of their project, the effectiveness of their brand, the impact the project had on the community, and their success and opportunities for improvement uh, looking back on what they've done. So they can receive points for the thoroughness of the evaluation and the creative integration of the evaluation into their theatrical presentation. So one of the interesting parts of the presentation that uh, we find very intriguing is the project puzzle in section B4. Um, this is a single physical product that is formed by putting together a group of at least five separate physical items together. Each separate physical item must symbolize some part of the project. Uh, section C of that is items will be considered put together when they are placed into a single structure or arrangement. The items may or may not be physically connected. And then from section D, each item should be visible from 25 feet away. There is a lot of information in this section and I really recommend that your teams read it through thoroughly. If there's some point that is not clear, Clarifications are there to to help out with it, but uh, this is a pretty broad definition. The definition of arranged together is very broad, and um, if the team can explain a reason why they have arranged things, arranged their project project puzzle, and why it symbolizes their um, project evaluation, then or, or symbolizes some part of their project. Uh, I think that definition is really up to the team as far as defining arranging. And was there a global uh, clarification on the at least five separate physical? Is it five yes. or more? So what is that clarification? I don't have it right in front of me. Don't we? We have the clarifications in a slide, don't we? I actually don't have it in the slide. It was on the handout. No. So we'll, okay. we'll have to email that to I will look it um, up. You. Is it a global okay. clarif it's a it's a global clarification? It is a global, yes, it is. The wording so on, on the, the first part has changed. Okay, hold on. 
in awarding the points, uh, the first the first part of the points is a score that just they get two points for each item up to five items that are combined to form the puzzle. Um, so they can't have more than five, but they only get the two points for up to five. Together. Right. So the the clarification exactly reads each item up to five items that symbolizes some part of the project and is combined to form the project puzzle during the presentation. Section E4A should read each of the five or more items that symbolize some part of the project that are combined to form a project puzzle during the presentation, two points each, 10 points maximum. So the important difference there is that the original challenge doesn't include the um, symbolism wording or what, that's what it says, right? It has to symbolize some part of the project. So if they arrange five items, but they don't symbolize the project, they don't get those points. Okay. And then the other things that teams can earn points for on the project puzzle are the effective integration of the formation of the puzzle into the presentation. So again, it has to be meaningfully connected to the rest of the presentation. And then also the creativity and originality of the project puzzle design. And what we've been saying with this element is to encourage teams to look past the obvious when it comes to the puzzle, that the definition is very broad. And that really thinking further and outside the box can help with those creativity and originality points. And of course, the last piece of the presentation is the uh, point <laughs> that has no points, uh, the team identification sign. Um, it, it doesn't carry any points, but it does let us know who the team is, make sure that we get the points to the correct team in the score room. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy. I know my Don't team loves... Don't put too much effort into it. Yeah, I, I have members on my team that just love to dig into this, and they can waste a whole meeting on it. So we've told them it's last. You know, we need to work on the things that will get your project points. So, low effort. Yep. Team choice elements. So this is... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you guys go with team choice elements, does anybody have any questions about the presentation or the um, project? If you have any questions about the presentation or the project, if you could put them in the question box and then I can have Megan or um, Dan answer those for you. If you don't, that's fine. I just wanted to just remind you that that question box was there. Go ahead. There aren't any questions right now, so go ahead. Okay. So the team choice elements are the team's chance to show off things that they're interested in, skills that they have, strengths, talents. It's their chance to really come up with something that they need or that has to do with their presentation um, and present it and get points for it. Um, Team choice elements can be, they, they need two, and they can include just about anything. So props, music, technical gadgets, costumes, physical actions. The only real restrictions on team choice elements are that they can't be something that is already judged in the rest of the presentation. So it can't be the project puzzle or... Um, what else? The evaluation. It, yeah, it needs to be. to be something that can be standalone on its own, on its own merit. It can be a part of those other elements, but it has to be easily separated from those other elements. And teams can get points for the creativity and originality of the team choice elements, the quality, workmanship, or effort, and the integration. So, team manager responsibilities. Um, it's your responsibility to be prepared. Uh, we encourage you to read the challenge with your team, read it alone, understand it as well as you can, and where you have questions, please ask them. Uh, you know, read it again and again and again. <laughs> um, you know, one of the big guides is look at that scoring page. Where are the points coming from? What is it that the team needs to make sure they present to get the maximum amount of points 
possible. And you know, have your team go through that and use it as their checklist and guide to make sure they're hitting everything that um, that needs to be touched on. And using the challenge is the way to make sure that the kids really have a positive experience doing um, creating their presentation and doing their project and then also have a positive experience at their tournament because if you use the challenge and read the rules um, those things should go smoothly. And then we have the rules of the road which is uh, applicable for every challenge. Um, again we encourage you to read them with you and with your team if possible. Uh, it can be a bit thick for the team sometimes so uh, the coach needs to be the one that definitely understands them and make sure that uh, it's your job to make sure the team isn't breaking any rules. And so reading through these two documents is, is key to your role as their coach manager. Um, can a human being be a part of the puzzle? I'm not sure if that's a clarification question or, um, but it's a question that we got. And if you want to refer it out, you can, but that's the um, question. <laughs> Okay, let me look back at our challenge and let's see. The project puzzle is a single physical product that is formed by putting a group of at least five separate physical items together. So I guess I think that is a good question for a clarification. Can you go through the clear items. can you go through the clarification process? So clarifications can be made on the uh, it's idudi.org, and if you go there, um, I think there's a button that will lead you to the clarifications, and that's your chance to write a question to the International Challenge Masters, and then they will give you a response, and you bring that response to the tournament with you, and it they'll help you define the rules or point you to the part of the challenge that will help you work through that question. And that's actually one of the bullets on our helping the team. Uh, take them to the clarifications. If they if they have questions, you submit those for them and bring them back for them to uh, read through and apply to their work. And um, I just checked the, uh, it's www.idodi.org, and it's actually under Challenge Program. If you click on Challenge Program and then go to Clarifications, you are going to submit a team specific clarification. You will need to have already been on the, you need to have a Shop DI account. So if you don't have a Shop DI account first, you'll need to do that first um, before you can do a clarification. But you should have your team number handy. And it really, it sounds more complicated than it is. It's pretty easy to write in for a team clarification. But the deadline on that is February 15th. And we highly encourage that if your team has any questions or any questions about defining the challenge, any questions about what's allowed, um, go ahead and do the clarification because it will make their their time at the uh, tournament easier. So whenever you're helping the team be on clarifications, you need to remember not to uh, have any interference. Everything that the team produces needs to be team produced. Um, you can't do the work for them. You can't give them ideas. Everything has to come from them. Um, your goal is to help them follow the rules and watch out for those points. Um, as we mentioned earlier, team safety is key. We want to keep all the kids safe and not put them in a bad spot. Don't have them go out meeting partners or others on their own. Uh, do co conference calls with a speaker. One thing, I just want to say one thing about interference. As a DI alum, this was, having interference be part of DI was one of the huge growth um, things for me when it came to DI. I think if you don't interfere and let the kids really own their project and own their presentation, they're going to walk away with so much more besides following the rules. Um, it really allows kids to feel like they've done something themselves and really feel proud in what they've accomplished. Sorry, Anything that was else? just my going no, back that, on that. That's great. Anything else we need to highlight on this slide? Um, have fun. Be positive. Believe <laughs> in your kids. That's what it's all about. Sometimes it's not going, sometimes it's going to feel overwhelming, 
Um, but I think it's just that have fun and be positive is really sticking to that, I think, helps a lot. So the next is helping the parents. I find one of the bigger challenges we have with our team is helping them understand to not interfere. We have a mom that is just dying to help her kid really go out and build this structure. Just got to get in there and, you know, I, I did this and I told them that. And it's like, well, we can't use that now. And so communicating where that line is and just don't step over it because we need your child to be able to run it. As, as Megan was saying, it's one of the most meaningful and biggest growth opportunities for the kids as they're doing the challenge. And I think one of the challenges with interference is that standing back and letting kids fail at something is really difficult. If, you, if they're doing something and you can see it's not going to work, just let them go through the process of realizing it's not going to work or failing, and then coming back and trying something new. Um, you want to make your parents aware of the state and global advancements. If, if any team's been around for a while, they're all aware of the costs that could go into going to globals. But if it's a new team, you need to uh, have that held out there so your parents aren't shocked or surprised <laughs> should your team make it to globals. Um, there is um, expenses that... Uh, the team will need to fundraise, and some parents may be able to cover, but it is one of those expenses that comes with making it uh, all the way. And make sure they know when the dates for both the state and global tournaments are. Um, even if it seems like a long shot, those should be planning on it. All right. Okay. Are there any more Tournament questions? Preparation. Uh, are there any other questions at this time before um, Dan and Megan do this? All right, go ahead. Take it away. <laughs> so tournament preparation, uh, it's really key to have your paperwork completed and copies of it. Uh, whenever um, we ask for the multiple copies, it's so that the appraisers have their own copy to read through and understand what the team is presenting and they know what to look for. So, um, the paperwork asks those key questions so the team thinks about how do I know I'm demonstrating where the points are in my presentation. And by, by having that paperwork filled out, the appraisers are able to identify those easier and multiple copies allows them yeah. to not have to Please share and pass sure it up and down. Five copies because that time in between teams is really short and uh, it really helps if we have enough copies for each appraiser to be able to read what they need to read before the team starts performing. Um, the presentation is typically in a classroom. Uh, occasionally we'll get a stage area, but uh, if the floor may be a hardwood or short nap. Uh, it will be at least eight by 10. You might find that there's extra space um, at Cherry Creek last year, we had the whole entire lecture hall uh, presentation area, so it's slightly bigger than the eight by ten, and there will be if one. If there's extra space, we'll give, we'll make sure to give that extra space to the team, but they need to plan on the smallest size being eight by ten. And there will be a three prong power outlet. Um, typically, it's an extension cord with a light to show that the electricity is working, and anything that the team needs from there. Uh, they need to bring on their own. Um, after the presentation is completed, the appraisers typically like to talk to the team to just understand the process and how the team felt it went and kind of have a little interview interaction with the team. So if your team is new to it and hasn't seen it before, you might prepare them for, you know, not to be shocked when the appraisers want to have a quick chat. And ask them what questions they think the appraisers might ask and have them come up with a list of questions and then practice answers to those and think about what their answers could be. Because the appraiser interview is really important on our end for making sure that we can give the teams as many points as they deserve to really understand what they've done. So are there any questions? So if you have any questions, you can put them on the question box. Um, 
you guys are a quiet group out there tonight. Um, <laughs> or Megan and Dan did just an awesome job explaining the challenge. <laughs> Um, so Dan and Megan can um, be reached. Are you? Do you guys share your emails? Or yeah, it's fine to share mine. Um, mine is w i l s d a n willsdan at gmail dot com. That's w i l s d a n at gmail dot com. And mine is m e g a n dot m o r g e and T H A L E R at Colorado dot E D U. Again, M E G A N dot M O R G E N T H A L E R at Colorado dot E D U. And you can also email me, Kate at D I Colorado dot org. That's just as it sounds, Kate with a K at D I Colorado dot org. If you didn't catch Megan's or Dan's, I will make sure that it gets to them. Sounds good. You had to go show me up with your short email. Yeah. <laughs> make it simple. Hard to letter last name. I know, and I have your name spelled wrong. I always thought it was more a Morgan, A N, not Morgan. Yeah, that's a mistake most people make. There you go. Well, sounds, thank you. <laughs> Since we don't have any questions. Um, we will, this uh, webinar will be on our DI Colorado YouTube page by tomorrow morning, and um, we will be going ahead and um, posting it up there so you can re-listen to it if you have any questions or give us some um, give us some feedback. All right. Well, thank I you all. I want to say thank you to all people willing to be team managers because you really make this program happen for the kids and give give the kids this opportunity so I agree thank you thank you well you guys all have a good night and um, you can go listen to the State of the Union address now um, or um, just <laughs> just go put your kids to bed so you guys all have a good night and we will see you at the tournament thank you